So, we will uh, redo some of the examples that we did, uh, did before. So, this was the first example that we uh, did earlier. So, here is a duct air comes in at 50 degree Celsius, one atmosphere, 85 percent relative humidity, volumetric flow rate is given, heat is added here and the air leaves uh, at uh, with the relative humidity of 25 percent and at the same uh, mixture pressure. So, we start by locating the inlet state on a psychrometric chart and that is uh, shown here. So, state 1 is over here. So, state 1 is here. So, any uh, uh, two arrows uh, the, the I mean the incoming arrows uh, denote properties that have been used to locate the state on a psychrometric chart. So, obviously, we need uh, two properties to uh, or two quantities to fix the uh, the state or locate the state in a psychrometric chart. So, the incoming arrows denote those properties or those quantities and the outgoing arrows indicate property values which have been looked up from the psychrometric chart for that particular state. Okay. So, in this case the temperature is given to be 5 degrees Celsius relative humidity is 85 percent. So, we use the line of constant uh, I mean line of phi equal to 85 which is this one here and temperature equal to 5 which is this one here to locate the state. Okay. Notice that this line corresponds to uh, phi equal to 70, this line corresponds to phi equal to 80, this line corresponds to phi equal to 90. So, phi equal to 85 approximately is in between uh, 80 and 90. So, we may fix the state here like this. Once the state is fixed, we retrieve h star corresponding to that state. So, h 1 I am sorry h 1 star and we pick up V A 1. Omega 1 is also uh, retrieved from the table as 4.5. So, this is omega 1. So, phi 1 is 85 percent, omega 1 is also retrieved from the table. So, we have retrieved H 1 star V A 1 omega 1 is also retrieved from the table although the exact value is not required, but anyway uh, because omega 2 equal to omega 1. Now, state 2 may be located by using the fact that phi is equal to 25 and omega 2 equal to omega 1. So, so omega is the value that is used to locate the state and phi equal to 25 percent line, the line is over here and we look up H 2 star for state 2. So, we look up H 2 star for state 2. Okay, now, we proceed with the analysis mass flow rate of dry air may be evaluated as V 1 dot over V A 1 that is nothing but 100 divided by V A 1 which we have looked up from the chart. So, that is simply 125.786. Application of first law to the duct gives us this expression and we substitute the values directly we get 39.83. So, you may see now how easy it has become to do these calculations. Earlier uh, we had to use a long expression to calculate V A 1. Remember V A 1 was calculated by saying that uh, V A 1 is equal to R air times T 1 divided by P A 1 or yeah P A 1 which itself is equal to a mixture pressure P minus P V 1 and P V 1 itself has to be evaluated from uh, the given value of phi. So, we have to do all these calculations and then get eventually V A 1 whereas, the chart uh, contains all this information in a ready to use fashion all these things have already been done. Remember all these things that we just mentioned. Okay relative humidity, how to use this, all these things are already embedded in the chart. So, it is straightforward to use and we just retrieve the values from the chart and then proceed with the calculations. So, all these intermediate steps or the, the uh, calculations corresponding to all this are already embedded in the chart. So, we may directly uh, look up the values and then 
um, uh, do the calculation. So, this is how the psychrometric chart makes calculations much easier, ok. Not necessarily much more accurate, whatever we did earlier actually is more accurate, uh, but this is much, uh, uh, much more easy to use. Okay. Accuracy probably is compromised a little bit because we have to look it up from the chart and uh, again some approximations have to be made when we are retrieving this from the chart. So, but that is acceptable and you may compare this value with the values that we calculated earlier and you will see that they are about the same, not uh, too different from one another. Let us just go back and quickly check. So, this we are getting 39.83 kilowatts. Let us see what we obtained before. So, we obtained 40.458. So, you can see what we uh, what we did here, right? Partial pressure. So, this partial pressure was evaluated uh, uh, from the definition of uh, the relative humidity and so on. Now, all these calculations are conveniently embedded in the psychrometric chart. The values that we are getting are not that different from what we had obtained earlier. Let us go to the next example. So, here we had a duct and there is a cooling coil. So, air at 35 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, 80 percent relative humidity comes in and uh, heat is removed from the air. So, there is condensation and then the air leaves at 22 degrees Celsius and fully saturated because condensation is taking place, it is fully saturated. So, let us see how we allocate the states on a psychrometric chart. So, 35 degrees Celsius, 80 percent relative humidity, state 1, relative humidity phi 1 is 80 percent, 35 degrees Celsius. So, this is T1, 35 degrees Celsius, this is the, uh, this is the line corresponding to phi equal to 80 percent. So, these are the two incoming arrows. So, we have fixed the state here like this and this is H 1 star and this is V A 1. So, we have retrieved V A 1. Notice that this line is parallel to lines of constant specific volume. So, lines of constant specific volume look like this. So, this corresponds to the line of constant specific volume that passes through this state. So, we have retrieved V A 1 also. Okay. So, this line corresponds to 0 0.9 for specific volume of dry air and this line corresponds to 0. Point, uh, I am sorry uh, 0.9 and this would correspond to 0 0.9 to uh, for 1 meter cube per kg. So, this falls in between. So, we approximate uh, using uh, some interpolation and then retrieve the A1. Okay? So, let us see what we have done here. So, we get V A 1 to be 0.915 based on interpolation and omega 1 is also retrieved. So, you can see that omega 1 is also retrieved from the tables to be 0.029 kg vapor. Remember this is in the chart gives the values in grams of vapor per kg dry air. We convert that to kilogram. So, you get 0.029 kg vapor V A and H 1 star all have been retrieved from the chart. Now, the dry bulb temperature of uh, state 2 and the relative humidity are both known, which means remember this is the curve that corresponds to phi equal to 100 percent, right. So, phi 2 is equal to 100 percent and this temperature 22 degree Celsius, this is the line for T2, right. This is uh, T2. So, this is uh, T2. So, the state has been located and this is nothing but H 2 star, this is nothing but H 2 star. So, we can retrieve H 2 star also and omega 2 has also been, uh, omega 2 has also been retrieved from the, uh, from the chart, ok. So, omega 2 basically is 16, about uh, 17 grams of vapor per kg dry air, ok. So, omega 2 is 0 0.0169 and H 2 star is 64. Actually, let me see, yeah. So, so mass flow rate of dry air is nothing but V 1 dot over V A 1 and this is the value that we have retrieved. 
So we may get it to be 131.15 kg per minute. So basically when you want to interpolate for example for VA1, so you use a ruler and so you know the distance here and the ruler gives you fine markings. So basically you can use that to determine the value for this. That is how you interpolate uh, graphically on a chart like this and similarly for um, uh, omega 2 also or omega 1 also. For any variable basically you line up your ruler with, uh, with the lines of a constant uh, with the two uh, lines which correspond to the uh, contours of the quantity that you are interested in, locate where your state is and then uh, visually interpolate. So, mass balance of water across the control volume basically is uh, water vapor that comes in minus water vapor that goes out. So, that comes out to be 1.5869 kg per uh, minute which agrees well with what we had calculated earlier. Now, SFEE applied to the control volume uh, gives us something like this. This value of course has to be looked up from the steam table issues. So, we get Q dot to be minus 5755.44 which is about 27.28 tons. So, let us see what we obtained earlier. So, we obtained 27.17 tons, now we have 27.28 tons which is close enough. For the uh, ease and comfort that we get by using the chart, the values are acceptable. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, an example that we have not done before. So, here uh, we have two unit uh, processes namely uh, dehumidification and heating together. So, air at 30 degree Celsius, one atmosphere, 80 percent relative humidity enters an insulated air conditioning duct where it is first cooled and dehumidified. So, we cool the air. So, the moisture condenses and uh, the air leaves the duct because there is condensation, air leaves the duct fully saturated. So, relative humidity goes up, but temperature comes down. So, we then heat the air so that the relative humidity comes down and the temperature increases slightly, but it does not matter because the relative humidity now is at a comfortable value. So, this is what is done in practical HVAC applications. So, we take the air, cool it, reduce its temperature. This process increases the relative humidity because the uh, uh, because of the condensation relative humidity becomes 100 percent. Then you, uh, you heat the air so that the temperature increases slightly, but the relative humidity comes down. So, you, you have a comfortable uh, temperature as well as relative humidity. We will check it by looking at the temperature that we have here, how much of uh, how much has the temperature increased as a result of heating. Okay? We will take a look at that also. So, this puts together both dehumidification as well as uh, control of relative humidity without adding moisture just by adding heat. So, uh, we are asked to do the calculation for unit volume flow rate of air that enters. So, we have taken uh, volume flow rate to be 1 meter cube per minute. So, let us locate as uh, state 1 in the psychrometric chart, state 1 uh, 30 degrees Celsius and 85 percent relative humidity. So, that state comes here. These are the two incoming arrows. So, we have retrieved H1 star and VA1 has also been retrieved. What is that? This line corresponds to 0.88 for VA1 and this corresponds to 0 0.90 for VA1. So, we interpolate based on uh, these two. Omega 1 has also been retrieved. Now, if you look at state 3, I am sorry, state 3 temperature and uh, relative humidity are both known. So, 22 degrees Celsius and 40 percent relative humidity that we should be able to locate because we have values for two uh, quantities. So, state 2, I am sorry, state 3, I am sorry. So, state 3 40 relative humidity 40 percent 22 degrees Celsius. So, uh, 22 degrees Celsius for state 3 and relative humidity 40 uh, percent which is this one. So, let us label that phi 3. So, that is this line here. So, the state is over here. So, this is H3 star. We have retrieved H3 star and we have retrieved omega 3. Now, if you look at uh, state 2, 
uh, notice that only one uh, quantity is known at state 2 that is relative humidity we need one more quantity. But between state 2 and state 3 there is no addition or removal of uh, moisture which means omega 2 equal to omega 3. We have already looked up omega 3. So, that means omega 2 equal to omega 3. So, 100 percent relative humidity is going to be over on this uh, along this curve and omega 2 equal to omega 3. So, we come here right. So, these are the two incoming arrows for locating the state. So, this is H 2 star and this is T 2. Notice that T 2 the temperature corresponding to uh, I am sorry the dry bulb temperature of uh, state 2 is actually uh, I am sorry uh, yeah state 2 is quite small. <coughs> okay, so, we retrieved these uh, using these values we retrieved omega 1, V A 1 and, uh, and H 1 star. Mass flow rate for unit volume flow rate of air may be calculated like this. So, <coughs> we lo located state 3 on the psychrometric chart and retrieved omega 3 and H 3 star. And then argued that omega 2 equal to omega 3 and we retrieved H 2 star and T 2. Notice that T 2 is 7.5 degree Celsius. So, T 2 is 7.5 degree Celsius. So, what is happening here <coughs> is that omega 2 equal to omega 3 and this temperature comes out to be 7.5 degree Celsius. So, we cool the air to 7.5 degree Celsius, but the relative humidity is 100 percent. The air is also very cold. So, we heat the air so that the temperature comes to a comfortable 22 degree Celsius and the relative humidity is also uh, at a comfortable value of 40 percent. So, that is what HVAC is all about. So, once we have these values, we can do mass balance of uh, water in the cooling section and uh, evaluate the mass of water that condenses to be 0 0.0166 kg per minute. So, this is basically mass of water vapor that comes in minus mass of vapor, water vapor that goes out. SFE applied to the uh, cooling section gives us this from which we can get uh, QC dot to be 0 0.322 tons per unit volume flow rate. Please bear that in mind. And the amount of heat that has to be added in the heating section may be evaluated quite easily that comes out to be 0 0.2715 kilowatts. So, if you want to scale up the uh, volume flow, or, uh, flow rate of air all these quantities can be easily scaled up. So, this is uh, how the knowledge uh, that you gained in the first course can be used for practical applications like this one here. Basically, you have not learned any new concept in this module on psychrometry because we have already dealt with uh, mixtures of ideal gas or mixture of ideal gases in the uh, previous course itself. You are just using those concepts in a different manner or in a manner well suited for or tailored for this particular application. <coughs> And uh, this uh, three examples also make clear how the psychrometric chart is extremely useful for doing uh, these calculations for practical applications. Of course, we can do all this in the manner that we did earlier also, but the psychrometric chart simply makes it much easier to do the calculations. So, what we will do in the uh, next lecture is look at um, a few more uh, applications of uh, psychrometry, not necessarily uh, HVAC applications, but uh, different applications where again uh, psychrometry is very, very important.